Right now in West Seattle, as I approach Easy Street Records for a morning breakfast and record crawl, I'm considering doing a live whack-a-mole within it. Should I? Hmm. Let's see. Let's start um, in the new arrivals, Whack-A-Mole, five albums at Easy Street Records in Seattle. See if this works. I have no idea what this is. David Lannon, street singer. Looks like he's a member of the, uh, okay. He looks like he's a member of the um, Manson family, doesn't he? I'm going to say Manson, Manson Family Singer. The bongos, Numbers with Wings. Uh, this is not bongos with Paul McCartney and Wings. This is the bongos, a band I have no idea who they are either. So I'm striking out two out of five. NRBQ, one of the greatest, I used to call them a bar band, my friend Vernon loved them, I saw them a couple times, I'm not in love with them, but they're one of the tightest live bands, party bands, live bands, rootsy, rock and roll bands, NRBQ, uh, New Rhythm, Bluton Blues Quartet, 1983 Burbank, they also were on Virgin Records for a while, so NRBQ. Uh, their stadium album is actually quite good. I have that one, so an RBQ. Let's go upstairs where the, oh, the other vinyl is. The Rose of Avalanche. I have no idea what this is on Fire Records. The UK import. See, it, it doesn't work. It's not my collection. So let's go upstairs, okay? I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you up, upstairs.
fantastic record. Let's try a whack-a-mole here now in the vinyl area upstairs at Easy Street Records. Iron and Wine, Shepherds and Dog, an indie, smooth, country folk, and the new age folk in a way. Um, I like the album that uh, he does with uh, Calexico. Uh, this is one of his early records that I recall. I can't remember if it was the first. It was on Sub Pop Records. I did see the tour of when the Iron and Wine uh, opened up for um, Plexico. In fact, they did the tour where Plexico would open up once and Iron and Wine would open up another time. So, Iron and Wine, uh, Sam Beam. Sam Beam, right? Sam Beam or Sam Bush? Sam Beam. Iron and Wine. I'm going to do a couple more here. Elvis Costello and the Attractions, Armed Forces. This is where it has, actions will happen. It has his great version of what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding, which was a huge, huge record uh, on the soundtrack of, of The Bodyguard that uh, Niccolo wrote and Niccolo produced. Uh, I love this record. Party Girl, Green Shirt, Oliver's Army. Uh, this, to me, is a top... Costello album. The first three records are great. I think this is the third record. Uh, fantastic record, kind of almost like a, um, if Jackson Pollock was designing record covers, he would design this record cover. I have a UK uh, original of this. So, Elvis Costello. Let me go to another part of the story. I just love this cover. I didn't pull this as a whack. I just wanted to show this because fucking whatever. I mean, you want to buy this just because it's fucking whatever music it is. Um, on Born Loser Records. I don't know this record, but um, what a great name for a man. Amy Whitehouse, Black to Black. Amy's one of the 27 Club, one of the great blue eyed soul singers of uh, the UK. Uh, Nouveau soul scene. What a tragic loss. A great, this is a great record. I mean, everyone needs to have this record in the collection. Um, troubled individual, but amazing singer. Uh, Back to Black, Amy Winehouse. Rehab, of course, that's the perfect opener to an album uh, that she records. So, uh, Amy. The White Stripes, brother, sister, you decide. Um, I love that they're, all their covers were kind of black and red. They really had that look, that theme. Again, I um, get behind me, Satan. This is one I don't have. Um, I never had this one. I have three White Stripe records. I love them. I listen to them, but I don't know them uh, enough to really enjoy it. So I don't specifically know the track from this album, but of course. Jack White. Jack White's one of those uh, artists who I really respect and love, and but I don't listen to his records very often, even though I have some of, some of the solo records. I like the uh, Rock and Tours almost better, but um, White Stripes. You know what can you say? Thanks. Uh, so this has been uh, a whack-a-mole. Not totally unsuccessful, but not totally successful in another record store, Seattle's uh, infamous Easy Street Records in West Seattle. Uh, it's a sort of Pearl Jam home record store. If they do live shows in a great cafe, let's look at the cafe and close out.
I just finished my whack-a-mole, and who do I run into? Is the infamous Kimbo, baby. Kimbo, baby. Welcome to Easy Street. Easy Street, Seattle. So, I only run into you record stores. When I, we have, how come I haven't been invited? How come I haven't been invited to Whiskey Wednesday? Oh. Is that like a special? <laughs> is, that a, is it a, I wear the t-shirt. It's a very... Is it a very private? It's a very cult cult. Do I have to work no, we'll have for, to work on that. It's, I'm just, I'm just kind of kidding. I mean, <laughs> but um, you uh, have to travel doing? to the east side. See, he's wearing his obligatory uh, uh, blue. Well, blue. The, we're in our blue period. Remember that. But his, uh, the what do you call it? Um, oh, flannel. Flannel from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. You know, I'm still in San Francisco black, even flannel. Yeah, I just, just got back. I just got back. Right on. Uh, yeah. So nice to right see on. you. Now you're, not, you're supposed to be covering your nose. I know, but my glasses fog up, and I can't see. Mine do too, I can't so. see myself. Okay, there we go. See. Hi, everybody out there in VC land. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. This will be inserted somewhere. We don't know somewhere, where. Somewhere. Anyway, whack-a-moles in stores are challenging, as you can see. So what did I buy? I did buy stuff. I'm not going to just go to a record store. And um, anyway, Kid A, Amnesia. The two thing, actually it's playing on the stand so I can't show it, but you know the artwork. It's that combination of Kid A and, and, and uh, Amnesia by Radiohead, which was possibly gonna be a double record. It's kind of playing in the background here. Now I did pre-order the big set with the book. It doesn't come out till next year, so I ended up splurging and getting it because Kid A is amongst my favorite all-time albums. Bruce Springsteen, um, I don't get all the live stuff. I don't get those live, you know, direct, from his side of those live shows, but the No Nukes, yeah, that really helped, didn't it? Uh, concert, this is a fantastic, so it's a, they're playing it uh, in one of the stores I was, I think it was in Portland, and it sounded fa fabulous. I love this period of, uh, of Springsteen. Of course, the 70s can't go wrong. I first saw him in 75. Born to Run Tour, you know, I mean, this stuff, come on. I'm gonna blast this this weekend. Uh, used records, uh, Trafalgar, Bee Gees. I like the 70s Bee Gees. Uh, beautiful stuff. Pop, Psychoduck, way before that disco crap they started doing, which I'm not actually, I'm actually a fan of. Now, probably my fifth or sixth copy of Bookends. I just got the mono copy, the rare mono copy from the Coleman collection. I got this mainly because the OG, plus it has the poster. And I, fi I figured I spent 30 bucks for the poster. I don't have a good po copy of that Richard Avedon poster or this great Rich Avedon cover. So, do I need another bookends? My favorite Simon and Garfunkel record. Uh, you know, i embarrassed to say, I have no, I don't have and I've never owned any soft machine. Yes, I know about them. I'm, an un, I'm just underprivileged and I'm just not worthy of some of you, but uh, I got this because it's, um, because it was 20 bucks, double album, and it's a UK, uh, uh, Columbia edition, so soft machine. I don't know which one's with, so I got this one. Any of you soft machines freaks will tell me what you think of this one, but I know about them. Now I've showcased on my uh, show many times Coco Rossi, Freak Folk, uh, Trip Hop, uh, Electronic, uh, Indie, Freaky Deaky, cool stuff. I saw them two or three times live. I do have this on CD, so I know the record. Uh, Le maison de mon dire, de be, sont des morts, que vont très bien ensemble. Some kind of French shit. One of the sisters uh, was brought up in, in Paris. Uh, love this record, I have the CD, I never had the vinyl, so uh, it was used, 20 bucks. You know, can't beat that. Now, I've never owned this record. <laughs> I bought two copies of it. They had two copies in the used bin. One for 10 bucks, one for 20 bucks. Why did I buy two? One had a better cover, one was a US, one's a UK on reprise, family, music in the dollhouse. Now, I've never heard this record, I hear it's really good, but the main thing, the Beatle connection here, if you don't know this, what is this record called? Music in a Doll's House. This came out in 1968, I think, right? It had to be 1968 because the Beatles' White Album was going to be called, the working title was A, a Doll's House. There's that great illustration uh, that was used on the cover of Beatles Ballads in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. Great kind of wonderful illustration. And that album, the, the working title for the White Album was Doll's House. They changed it because the family put out an album, Doll's House, related uh, that year. So that's it. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. Whack-a-moles are fun on location. They're challenging. 
but you know, nobody kicks me out and maybe I brought a little business. Check out Easy Street, great record store in West Seattle and uh, cafe have a cheap, great kind of greasy scoop, spoon uh, a breakfast there. Now they serve, they have that little bar area as you probably saw upstairs in the video. It's just opening up when I got there. Mazzy loves you and Mazzy loves Easy Street. Oh, and Kimbo. Hi, Kimbo. Bye, Kimbo.